give everybody an update on what's going on with us this summer. I haven't posted any RV videos in a while. We have an extra couple of dogs in the house. I'm not sure where Hot Dog is, but Rosie is cocked out on the couch. <laughs> I'm not sure how she can sleep in that position, but she's been like that for uh, probably half an hour or longer. And Gizzy's conked out over there. I wanted to give a little update on our RV life since I haven't really posted any videos to speak of this summer in relation to RVing. Uh, you know, we do live in our RV full time, <laughs> even though sometimes we aren't particularly mobile. And summer times, a lot of times, we settle down somewhere in Wisconsin near Madison and spend the summer, and that's the case this year as well. Uh, so we'll, we'll be hitting the road uh, late August or early September. I think we'll wait till Labor Day is over so that the crowds are gone from the campsites and uh, we'll have a little more freedom. But we're headed east this year. But we, we did uh, hit the road here for a couple of weeks. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the, you know, one of the reasons that we traveled and took the RV, we went on vacation in northern Minnesota, but Terry's Uncle Freddie passed away. And so we just left early on our vacation to go to his funeral and took the RV. And then we went on up to Minnesota after the funeral and like all funerals um, there it's a, a kind of a mixture you know it was uh, sad to be saying goodbye to Freddie but it was a lot of fun to reminisce with everybody and to see all the relatives that you don't always see on a regular basis so it's a you know very mixed uh, emotional time but Freddie was a good man and uh, worked hard, incredibly hard uh, all his life. Had two basically full-time jobs for 30 years, uh, which is uh, pretty crazy. Uh, you know, basically he uh, earned everything he ever got in life. So we said goodbye to Freddie and we headed up to northern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin. And if you've never been to the Lake Superior area, the Arrowhead area of Minnesota, or the uh, northern part of Wisconsin on the south side of Superior, it's, it's just gorgeous. Uh, you know, it's a heavily wooded area. So we went to Hungry Jack Lake Resort. And this resort is west of Grand Marais, about 30 miles. And Grand Marais, man, that sounds really cool, doesn't it? The French, Grand Marais. Well, I made the mistake of looking up what Marais meant in French, and it turns out it's swamp. So Grand Marais sounds a hell of a lot better than Great Swamp, right? But it's, a, it's the town's quaint, and it is pretty, and it isn't swampy right there. But... Uh, so we went to Hungry Jack Lake with my daughter's family and we had a great time. It, the lodge is uh, just quintessential Northwoods kind of a deal, you know. We rented boats and canoes and, and uh, it's a stone's throw from the Boundary Waters canoeing area. There's a bluff called Honeymoon Bluff and there's a hiking trail that goes up to the top of it. So we were on the lake one day and I took a picture of it while we were on the lake and then we hiked up it the next day to get a picture. And we're looking in the picture at Hungry Jack Lake back towards the lodge. But the lake you see off to the north in this picture or to the right in the picture is, uh, I've forgotten the name of it, but it is in the Boundary Waters canoe area and it's a launching point where people park their cars and head off on their excursions into the Boundary Waters. So it's remote enough 
that when you take pictures at night, you don't have uh, light pollution for the most part. And you can get some spectacular pictures. Now the thing about being up north in the summer is that the horizon still has light on it very late. Uh, so you do pick up some light on the horizon, but it's actually from the sun. Uh, when you do these time-lapse uh, photos that really bring out the, the stars. But we had fun doing that and just enjoyed the whole area. And it's always nice to get away and do something a little bit different. But one of the things that we did that was different was that because we were this close to Canada, we decided, and Terry had never been to Canada, nor my, I don't think my daughter had either, and the kids. So we all went to Canada and we went to Thunder Bay, which sounds like a cool place. You know, we were all expecting like a Bayfield, Wisconsin sort of town, quaint Lake Superior town. And Thunder Bay is not that. Thunder Bay is an industrial town dominated by a wood products company. And it's, so it's very blue collar town, which is, you know, nothing's wrong with that, but there are some social issues associated with uh, Thunder Bay, which make it the murder capital of Canada. Now that sounds much worse than it is, because by American standards, uh, it's very safe, uh, because it's like a tenth of one of our murder capital cities in terms of the murder rate. But for Canada, it is the murder capital of Canada. So we had lunch there and we're expecting to kind of wander around town a bit. And we came out after lunch and we realized this wasn't the place we thought it was. But we especially realized that when as we came out after lunch at the hotel, that someone is stealing the bike off of the back of my car. Now, I had already had my bike stolen once in California and never, of course, recovered it. I don't even bother with the police on that kind of thing. But we come out and somebody's stealing my bike. And I didn't realize it at first, but I, you know, I yelled out, hey, and then it turns out it was a woman in her late 20s, I would guess, maybe 30, early 30s. And I was angry. It's, you know, after having my bike stolen before and I yelled at her, you know, I'll beat the shit out of you whether you're a woman or not if you steal my bike, which I would never do that. I, you know, I wouldn't beat the crap out of anybody over a bike, let alone a woman, you know, and then I just, as I got closer to her, you know, I, I just told her, piece of shit, you know, and then I looked at her closer and I looked at her eyes and there's nobody home there. You know, she's either severely mentally ill or she's on some kind of drugs. Whatever the case, she's a human being just in a position where she'll do anything to survive. And I treated her like crap. And, you know, I felt bad about that. You know, even stealing my bike, you don't deserve to be treated like that. So, uh, you know, I've. I've made a vow to myself to think more of the condition these people, their lives are in when they're doing that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, because if she had been begging on the street, I would have given her money. Uh, so, anyway, lesson learned, <laughs> but Thunder Bay <laughs> was not what we thought it was going to be. And my wife's first Canadian experience has her sort of wondering if she ever <laughs> wants to go back. But anyway, fortunately, I've been to Canada a couple of times and and found it to be a charming place other than <laughs> other than Thunder Bay. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, we'll be hitting the road here in a month or so and uh, more regular videos will be forthcoming. Bye-bye.